Hello everyone, Rutschman back with another episode of SmackDown Results for April 25th, 2017. If you guys do like, please leave one and subscribe. But yeah, to get into this week's episode of SmackDown Results, we start out the show with a Shinsuke Nakamura interview and him trying to uh, announce his message to the WWE Universe. Now that he's on the main roster, but instead, before he can even talk, he is rudely interrupted by Dolph Ziggler. Oh, excuse me. Dolph Ziggler comes down and is like, Oh, man. Who are you, man? Like, really? Who are you? Blah, 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 blah. And he kicks him in the gut, beats him down. Everyone boos. No surprise, because everyone loves Shinsuke. Uh, Dolph is going for a super kick. Shinsuke catches him, turns him around, inverted power slam, and then Shinsuke heads to the corner for the Kinshasa, but instead is greeted with a disappointing ending because Dolph moves out of the way like a little bitch, and he runs away. So it looks like they're going to be throwing him into that feud for his first feud on the main roster. Kind of wish it was for a championship, like, uh, I don't know, maybe the U.S. championship. Or the WWE Championship. Because Shinsuke is ready for anything and everything. Anything. Yeah. Anything and everything. Any title and every title. I believe. But whatever. Misusing them already. Just make, just, just saying. You know. It would have been a worthy contender for that US belt. Oh man. I would love to see that. You know. If there is a potential. You know stipulation or not stipulation but if there is potential for him taking on AJ again for the championship you know whether it be US or WWE world that'd be amazing but nope instead they're sending him to Ziggler now don't get me wrong Ziggler is a good wrestler and he's entertaining and he puts on good matches but I've just grown tired of him ever since the Intercontinental Championship match was or the Intercontinental Championship was misused on him. You know, because he won it in an amazing match of No Mercy last year. They're like, okay, this is the definitive ending. But then they carried it on. Like, oh, no, it's not done. Nope, nope, it's not done. Oh, oh, we screwed it up. Oh, oh no. You know, they, they, mis they misdid that feud. They overdrew it. Uh, really long, longer than it needed to be. Could end it at no mercy, send Miz up to the main event, and had Dolphs uh, defend it against guys like maybe Dean or Shinsuke or anyone, really. But whatever. Then, after that, we come back from commercial and are treated to uh, Byron Saxon plugging a Papa Roach song for Payback. And after that, uh, we get the announcement that KO will be on commentary for the Styles vs. Corbin match, which will take place next. Uh, Styles vs. Corbin starts really good match between these two guys. Uh, can't put on a match. Or, can't, can't put on a match. Can't put on a bad match. They cannot. Because AJ Styles is phenomenal, no pun intended, and AJ St and Baron Corbin is getting really better at his ring work and just his character work. But yeah, really good match. A uh, little bit of a tussle between him and KO during this match, him and AJ that is. AJ kicked him in the face, and then he went and uh, won the match. And then after that, uh, KO and Baron Corbin beat the shit out of AJ Styles. But not for long because Sami Zayn came down and saved AJ Styles. And surprisingly, that didn't set up a tag match between those guys. Maybe next week, but who knows. But, uh, yeah. Really good uh, segment with those guys. Da -da -da. AJ Styles wins. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. Then, after that. We go to the back and see Charlotte Flair working out backstage when she is approached by an interview. Uh, Charlotte says every superstar has blood on their vein. 
in their veins, on their veins, in their veins, but gold runs through hers. She's been once champion four times before, did everything she can on Raw, and now the queen needs to, a, needs a knee, uh, needs a new kingdom to rule on SmackDown. So she plans to take the championship from Naomi or whoever is champion when she takes it away from her. Then after that, we get a plug for the Beat the Clock Challenge happening tonight between uh, between four tag teams. And those four teams are the uh, Shitty Stars or the Collins or the Colognes or whatever the fuck they want to call themselves. I don't know. Uh, take it on American Alpha. And then after that, we have the Ascension take it on Breeze Angle. And you will be surprised when you hear who won. If you don't know already. But then after that we come back from commercial. And into our second match of the night. Which was American Alpha taking on the Colognes. Or Collins. Or however the fuck you say it. Uh, in a beat clock style match. Where the uh, quickest time uh, for the match. Uh, that the people beat their opponents in will get a number one contendership match or number one contendership for backlash against the Usos for the SmackDown Women's SmackDown Women's Championship SmackDown's tag oh my god I need to stop talking so fast SmackDown Tag Team Championships <laughs> oh my god but uh yeah pretty good match uh American Alpha beat them in like 5 minutes 15 seconds so we know they're gonna you know we know the clones are gonna go places with you know being beaten in 5 minutes and 15 seconds but uh yeah then after that uh the Usos are watching backstage seemingly unbothered by these happenings then commentary informs us that Rowan slash Orton and a message from Rusev are up next go to break come back and we get a new day vignette just promoting them for when they come to the main roster or not to the main roster but smackdown then we toss to rusev's message he starts off by saying he doesn't like daniel bryan or shane mcmahon and he doesn't approve of these superstar shakeups. so the only way he's wrestling for smackdown is if he gets a title match at money in the bank or he'll Pack up his bags and go to Samoa or Bulgaria. He looks like he's from Samoa though. But yeah. Then after that we get a Becky Lynch interview backstage about Charlotte arri Charlotte's arrival to the SmackDown roster. Uh, Becky says, oh she's a great opponent. I'm not going to do an Irish accent. That's very offensive. But then after that Natalia Tamina and Carmella with James Elworth. Ellsworth interrupt uh, the interview and says, "Thou, who you, who side you on, bitch? Who side you on? You better pick right." And then, uh, yeah, they they walk off. Then after that, we get uh, Randy Orton making his entrance for his no DQ match between him and Eric Rowan. Then we come back from break, and then we get him. Taking on Eric Rowan in a no disqualification match. Pretty good match. None really to write home about, but whatever. Randy Orton won, of course, uh, giving him momentum against Bray Wyatt uh, this Sunday in his House of Horrors match. Ooh, wonder what it's gonna be. It's probably gonna be trash. And yeah. Hopefully this match will not be on the Titan Tron and hopefully it will not be pre-recorded. But it'll probably be because it's called House of Horrors and no one knows that knows what that is. So yeah. Then after that, uh did I say yeah, Randy won and everything. Then uh Randy gets on the mic and says he doesn't know what a House of Horrors match is, but for some reason he feels like it's gonna be trash. No, like he's gonna find out Sunday. Well, no shit, you're gonna find out Sunday because you're in that match Sunday. But then he denies Bray's conception 
that the match will be his purgatory, insisting instead that it'll be Wyatt's hell, eternal hell. Then after that, Jinder Mahal interrupts Orton and uh, cuts really good promo, really liking his heel work so far as, you know, top level heel, that's what I call it. But he's like, oh, you treat me differently because I'm this color, you treat me differently because I'm this, blah, 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 blah. Uh, Randy Orton tries to go for a spike DDT on Mahal. Mahal strikes first, though. Uh, Randy tries to end it with a spike DDT, but then the Singh brothers, or the Bollywood boys, help Mahal hold Randy Orton's legs down, and Mahal beats crap out of Randy Orton, hits his finisher on him, and, uh, yeah. So, looking to go forward with that feud. And, uh, yeah. And then Mahal steals the WWE Championship, gets in a limo, and rides off with the Singh Brothers. Or the Bollywood Boys, whatever you want to call them. They don't really matter because they're trash in my opinion. But we'll see. We'll see what they can bring to the table. Maybe may, maybe they can bring something, something to the table. But who knows. Then, after that, he, uh... Oh, never mind. Then, after that, uh, commentary puts our remaining matches over, and we get another Lana vignette talking about her stripper gimmick or whatever, and uh, when it's coming, and it just said soon, I think. And, uh, yeah, then we come back from commercial, then we get a recap of what just happened, and I just told you what happened, and yeah. Then after that, we get the final beat the clock match, or beat the clock challenge between Bree Zango and the Ascension. Uh, and surprisingly, Bree Zango are your number one contenders for the SmackDown Tag Team Championships. Heading into back, headed into backlash, headed into backlash. So. That's really interesting. I mean, I know they don't have much of a tag team division, but wow, that is pretty surprising. Wonder if they're gonna win. Probably not, but that'd be interesting if they did. Because, I mean, they are a good tag team, and I like their heel work and everything, but who knows. And after that, after that, after that, after that, we get... Uh, hold on. We come back from commercial, then we get some hype for Talking Smack later after this, and also 205 Live. Then, uh, we then get a Bray Wyatt video package, largely reprising his promo from Raw. Then, after that, we get a Naomi interview backstage about her match, saying, uh, that Charlotte has been a standout competitor, Blah, 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 and beat her fair last week. Blah, 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 but she's running her mouth about being the best and the greatest. Because I'm the best and the greatest, and yeah. And she's gonna go up there and do what she does best. And that's kick ass. And, uh, yeah. Then Naomi makes her entrance, and we come back from commercial. Commentary plugs payback, uh, Plug Payback's pre-show a bit, and, uh, yeah. Then we head into our main event of the evening, which was Charlotte Flair taking on Naomi for the SmackDown Women's Championship in a really good match. These two can not put on a bad match, in my opinion. They put on a great match last week, put on another one this week, but, sadly, it ended in a disqualification due to the, uh, trinity of... Natalia, Carmella, and Tamina taken or taken out both uh, Charlotte and Naomi, proving that oh, it's not fair that you get a title shot and we don't. Women power, and uh, yeah, but they caused that and beat up them to end the night, and uh, yeah, but pretty good episode of SmackDown. Uh, not nothing really new to add 
But, um, yeah, guys, that's going to be it for another episode of SmackDown Results for April 25th, 2017. If you guys did like and want to see more, please leave a like, leave a comment, and subscribe if you're new. Also, find me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and Snapchat. And if you want to see the rest of the series, please click play this link down below. The annotation on the screen at the end of the video. But as always, have a nice day. I'll see you all in the next one.